are talking about Portugal this evening, and why are we talking about Portugal? A lot of people have actually decided that Portugal is the place to be. Portugal is a beautiful country, and this evening we are going to find out from our three experts who also live in Portugal about why and what we can we what we can do to um, to settle there. So, Rina, shall we start, please? with the next slide. So the ladies joining us from Portugal are three experts. We have Ana Marta, who is a lawyer at uh, Guidoni di Pana. Liliana Rosa, who is the founder of Control Key Consulting, who is an expert in taxes. And Patricia Ortega and Karna how I hope I pronounced it it's well. Encarnação. It's Encarnação. Encarnação. I've been practicing that one. Encarnação. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> I failed. I'm so sorry. But welcome, okay. welcome, ladies. Um, thank you for joining us this morning and sharing your knowledge about how um, people can move to Portugal and also, you know, um, giving and offering your your help and giving us all the information that we need. So, shall we start? Who is jumping in first? Rina, next slide, please. So actually, I just wanted to say today's discussion, I've already started why we wanted to move to Portugal. This, this discussion this evening will contain um, information about options of obtaining residency, tax um, implications, and the whole process. And also we will touch in about property, um, the market over there. So, and then we will take questions and answers later. Um, next slide, please, Rina. Why live and invest in Portugal? I believe it's Ana Marta who's starting this. No, actually it's myself. Oh, Patricia, yes. Patricia. Please yes, go ahead, because, um, thank you. I just wanted to share my um, experience to everyone who's listening at the moment because um, I used to be um, living in Singapore as well. I was living there for 15 years and um, I actually met my husband who's Portuguese um, and he lived there for 10 years. We moved here in Portugal um, six years ago. And um, in the beginning, when we were still in Singapore, when my husband told me he has a very um, interesting job offer, um, it's very good on sustainability, and moved um, in Portugal. And I was thinking, um, I'm not sure about that because um, I'm, I was happy in Singapore, you know, the lifestyle there, the quality of living, and I had all my friends there. And then uh, finally, uh, we decided, okay, let's go for it. We came here and um, it's been six years now and I have no regrets at all. We love the, the living um, lifestyle here and um, it's been fantastic really. And um, for me, my life totally changed here. It, it became more, um, you know, uh, quieter, but then it's, it's a, a lot of quality. Um, there are several reasons um, why people should try to have the option of living here or even investing here. Firstly, I, I'm sure you've heard all about the weather. Um, you know, we have 300 days of uh, sunshine, blue sky. Right now it's winter, but, um, you know, we had a couple of days ago, it was 21 degrees. So you can imagine we were in the beach. So the, the weather is fantastic. You see a lot of um, other people from other nations just move here primarily because of that. It, that gives you a quality of living. The food cost, um, rental, your money goes a long way. So it's fantastic. And um, also the profitable investment options that you can have. Um, a lot of influx of tourists, uh, despite the pandemic, um, the real estate market grew 9%. And so it's, um, I believe it's um, a good option to try and move here. Um, and people, for me, uh, one of the best things as well are the people. They're very warm, genuine, and um, they're knowledgeable. Like uh, you can talk to anyone and they'll feel, uh, make you feel at home. 
Karina. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will spoke about the uh, requirements for you to live in Portugal for the residents. I will talk today about two, um, two options, that is D7 and Golden Visa. What is the D7 visa? The D7 visa is a residence visa who um, that gives you uh, the, the allows you to live in Portugal. What is this uh, live in Portugal? You need to stay in Portugal for more than six months to be eligible for this kind of visa. So it is a cheaper visa than the golden visa that I will talk uh, later. And this is the, the visa uh, for retires and for people who have enough income uh, to live uh, in Portugal. So that brings us to the requirements. Uh, it needs to be a person who lives for their own income. And what does this mean? This means that you need to have a balance, a good balance account. What is the good balance account? I advise you to have at least 20,000 uh, euros in your Portuguese bank account. So uh, the requirements are having a Portuguese bank account, having enough money in that Portuguese bank account, and also you need to have a NIF. What is a NIF? It is a, the Portuguese tax number that Liliana Rosa, who is here, can explain you better how to get it and how it is will work. What is the procedure about the D7 visa? There are two steps for having it. Uh, the first step is for you uh, to apply in the Portuguese country in Singapore or in the country where you are living for more than one year. And after uh, the consulate gives you the visa, you have four months to come in to Portugal. What are the advantages of this? Uh, you can be a legal residence in Portugal. You uh, are allowed to have our public health system, which is very good. Um, you can have family reunification for your spouses, for your children, uh, minor children. Um, legal of age children at least until 21 years old and also for your parents uh, as long as they are more than 65 years old. So this is the D7 visa. Now, Rina, can you change the slide for the golden visa, please? So the golden visa, it's another way of having the visa, which is a really a residence card. It's not a visa in your passport. People sometimes think about this, but it's not. It's common to say golden visa, but it's not really a visa like the D7 visa that you have in your passport. The golden visa is a residence permit card that allows you also to live in Portugal through investments. Uh, and for that, for you to be eligible, you need to be citizens of countries outside the European Union. So who has a passport from the European Union are not eligible for this kind of visa. Now you can ask me what type of investment are you talking about? We are talking about the real estate acquisition or also transfer of capital through funds or even a deposit in a balance, in a bank deposit, a balance. The real estate acquisition, it needs to be 500,000 euros. 
uh, the investment through funds changed. Uh, this is one topic, changes after January 1st. Uh, it was until last year 350 uh, hundred euros, but now it is 500,000 uh, euros that you need to invest through funds. The balance, you can also apply for a golden visa as long as you have 1,500,000 euros in your bank account. So these is, are the requirements for having this golden visa. You also don't need to leave the change, the difference between the D7 and the golden visa is mostly this one, the price and uh, the, the periods of stay. For the D7 is for people who wants to live because it's cheaper and who wants to live in Portugal can apply for the D7 visa and be here more than six months. The golden visa, no, the person doesn't need to be here uh, six months. The period of stay is seven days per year, kind of, uh, but it's mostly seven days a year. What advantage does golden visa brings you? The golden visa as, uh, as, as the same as the D7, you can have uh, uh, access to our public health system. You can have family reunification. Uh, your children, if they go to the university, uh, can have um, uh, to tuition fees uh, discounts. So, uh, and you are also uh, allowed to travel in the Schengen area without needing a visa because you are residents in the a country belongs to the European Union. The duration of this kind of investment, this kind of golden visa is the five years. You need to maintain your investment during the five years. Uh, now, just, just a few, another point. After five years counting, since you have your residence permit card, golden visa or D7, you can apply for the citizenship, Portuguese citizenship, as long as you know Portuguese, A2 level. Rina, you can, you can show the another PowerPoint. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liliana. I will be your tax expertise for today. Um, first of all, uh, the NIF, as Anna Marta um, uh, spoke before, uh, it's the tax ID number. Uh, it's mandatory, okay, and you will need it for all your transactions here in Portugal. At the, to start, you will need it to open the bank account then you will need it to buy a property or to invest in, the, in a fund. And um, even if you want to invest um, during the period that uh, you will have your visa, uh, you can do that and you will always need your uh, NIF. It's the tax ID, um, it's a, the fiscal tax ID, okay? Then NHR, it's a very common uh, subject because it's a very, very good uh, scheme that Portugal offers to their uh, new, let's say, citizen. Okay, and uh, you can apply for it as long as you move your address to Portugal. I will come back to this uh, later, um, but just for you to have an idea, it's a, it's a, a specific uh, regime and has a few benefits for everyone that moves their fiscal residence to, to Portugal. Uh, it calls a non-habitual resident. Okay, Rina, please. Uh, this uh, NHR, the non-habitual residence, will give you uh, a couple of benefits. For example, if you move to Portugal and you have income from your work, okay, or a self-employee activity that you have, you can apply for the high value activity. It's a list of activities. And instead of you pay the taxes 
the tax rate according to the brackets, you will pay a flat tax rate of 20%. It's very good because here in Portugal, our last bracket, uh, the tax rate is 48. So uh, you will have the opportunity to have a flat tax rate of 20% on your income. Then if you are retired and you have pensions from abroad, uh, you will pay a, a fixed tax rate of 10%, okay? These used to be, they used to be exempt of taxes, but uh, tax authorities changed the rule uh, two, uh, two years ago, more or less. Then you have uh, uh, other uh, sources of income that uh, sometimes they will be uh, completely exempt of taxation, okay? But that will depend on the treaty that Portugal has with a specific country where you have that source of income. Uh, but for example, for you to have an idea, um, income from stocks uh, from Singapore. Uh, Singapore, for example, they, they are exempt of taxation here in Portugal. Uh, dividends from the UK, uh, self-employee activities from at the, in the US. So this is just a couple of uh, examples that um, you can, that you will <coughs> benefit uh, if you have the uh, NHR, NHR status, okay? But this is uh, just, uh, I want to, to mention this again. The NHR, it's only if you move to Portugal, okay? And if you have just the golden visa and you just want to have the, the, the possibility to fly uh, and you don't want to move to Portugal, it's not mandatory to change your fiscal address to Portugal. And it's not mandatory to uh, declare your global income here in Portugal, okay? It's just, if you want to move to Portugal under the D7 visa, you can apply for the, for the NHR and then you will, uh, <laughs> you will have these, these benefits. Uh, Rina, please. <clears throat> the property taxes that you will have to pay in case you invest in a property. And these taxes are the same if you live at your house or if you just have the, the property to, to, to have income and to apply for the golden visa. Okay, these, uh, these taxes are uh, the same in both situations. So you will have the IMT, is the transport tax. Okay? This, this tax um, uh, rate uh, will... Um, you will have the tax rate according to the type use and the value of the property. They will have brackets uh, according to the, the, the amount of the acquisition. Um, then you have the stamp duty. It's a single rate of 0.8%. Uh, These two uh, taxes, IMT and the stamp duty, you pay that when you buy the house, okay? When you, you, will, you will sign the final deed and you will have to pay these both taxes, okay? Then the most, uh, the municipal tax, it's an annual um, tax that you will pay. And uh, it, it's not a, a very big amount because the tax authorities do the calculations based on the, the value of the property that they have, not the uh, market value, okay? So the, the, the amount you will pay annually will be uh, not so 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 higher than if you consider the, the acquisition uh, amount. Uh, Rina, please. <coughs> For the EMT, the transaction tax, you will have a couple of exemptions. Uh, for example, if you buy uh, property to resale, okay, if you buy properties in rehabilitation, imagine that you can find a, a, a a deal that the, the building was renewal, okay? And the developer has a specific project for um, rehabilitation. It's not, it, it not just a, a renewal of the building, okay? It needs to be a rehabilitation of the building. Then you will pay the transaction tax, but then the tax authorities will reimburse you the amount you, you have paid, okay? Uh, the same for, uh, um, tourism if you want to buy a property for tourism and buildings that that are classified as a national public or municipal interest okay rena please <clears throat> ah sorry it's missing one one slide um i i just want to, to let you know that about the funds if you want to invest in a fund you don't need to pay uh, uh, taxes on that income because it's mandatory to uh, consider the income that you will have 
<clears throat> with the fund, um, you have to declare it uh, in the country where you have your fiscal residence, okay? When you have, where you have your tax residence. So you, you will declare that this specific income with all your global income, and then you will pay taxes according to your, uh, the rules to the, the country where you have your tax, uh, your fiscal residence, okay? Uh, some funds, um, they have the withholding tax. It's like uh, uh, they, they will retain a part of your income. And, but then you can consider it that payment <coughs> when you will uh, file your annual tax declaration, okay? But it's not common. The, the, the use have the, the, the funds use have that specific, uh, um, uh, oh, well, the, the specific, uh, 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 sorry, deal, let's say with the tax authorities and you don't need to pay the withholding tax. We, you will have your, your income uh, growth and then you will pay taxes where you have your fiscal residence. And for my side is everything and I look forward for your questions. <laughs> Thank you. So now let's go to the exciting part, which is the property market. Um, I'm sure since you're all here gathered today, you're very much interested with the property uh, market in Portugal. And uh, yes, um, the prices has increased. Um, it's been very buoyant um, since the last five years, I must say, since we moved, I could see that uh, the influx of, of investments have been coming in. Golden Visa has... Um, you know, it has been so popular. And uh, right now, the situation is we don't have a lot of um, availability for rental. So there's a, there's a lot of people who want to move here and live here and invest. However, the, the issue is we don't have enough uh, properties available that even offers for the international market. That's why if you come to the key cities in uh, Portugal, you'd see a lot of um, you know, construction going on because the country was never ready for this market. You'd see a lot of um, developers coming in from even different parts of the world because they see the, the in influx of tourists. Uh, now Portugal is under the radar of a lot of travelers despite the pandemic many people, I think it's the pandemic even caused many people to look for an alternative or they realize what quality of life is all about. We, um, as a country, we did pretty well in terms of um, the measures that the government did for the vaccination and for the restrictions that we have. At the moment, um, because of, of the situation with the, with, Omicron, the numbers increase. However, um, you could still see people like people wanting to move here because uh, there's freedom in the sense that you know people can still go to the park and um, enjoy their quality of life. But everyone wears their mask, or there's individual uh, responsibility. You could see this from the people, and I think this is very important. So um, now if we talk about the property market, Portugal is, is beautiful. You can have um, your investments in the key cities, which is Porto, Lisbon, and the coastal areas. Um, but you could also see that there are many um, locations that are very attractive at the moment. For instance, Rina, maybe you can show them some of, there's a sl um, slide that shows properties and what's going on in Lisbon and uh, the other parts of uh, the country, you could see here that there's been a lot of gentrification um, going on because most of the buildings are either 30 years or 50 years old. So there's a need for reconstruction. I think what's charming about it and what's really good about it is that the government is very particular on the, um, that the beauty of the buildings, the old buildings are maintained. So the facade um, are, are not touched. And, uh, but inside, when you go inside a building, the gentrification um, shows you that inside is all new. Some they, they even, um, you know, tear it apart to have new modern 
uh, facilities inside an old building. Then they just paint the front or change the tiles. So this is what's going on, the gentrification um, construction in Portugal. And at the at, there's a slide here that you can see, uh, this is a new development as well, Infinity, which shows you that Lisbon also has other um, real estate opportunities for, for international market or in the local market as well. Uh, you can see a modern building. This one is an iconic building because you, you don't see this in, in, um, in Portugal. There are amenities, there's swimming pool. It's kind of like um, a Singapore condominium. This is not popular. This is not common in um, in Portugal. But you see the demand in the in the international market and having good amenities. So the proper mar property market has really um, gr have grown so much and now catering to the international market. For the next slide, um, Rina, you could see also that there are other areas in um, Portugal that are very exciting to a lot of investors and people that wanna live here or have their second homes. For instance, there's one development in Melides and in Comporta. This is about uh, two hours away drive from, um, from Lisbon. You see like big uh, personalities moving there and having their investments because in Portugal, uh, you can see serenity. It's like, it's not, overcrowded and people respect your distance. And uh, this project here, it's in a big um, area. It's in Melides. So this is one of the areas that's um, becoming so popular, like Lobotan's building his hotel and also uh, Philip Stark. So you see these personalities that are like eyeing on these areas. And uh, Porto as well, it's been growing. You can see a lot of tech industries coming up and um, a lot of um, industries that are starting, startups and um, people that want to start their own business. Porto's been one of the areas that's been identified as well. So this property here that I'm showing, it's, that it's in the slide, is a commercial property that can be turned into a shop or apartment. So it's diversified. So you can see beautiful, charming buildings uh, that are now um, renovated inside to, to uh, cater to a market that's more discerning. Rina, next slide. I think that's about it for everyone. Now we go to the question and answer portion. Rina, do you want to stop sharing so that we can see all the ladies' beautiful faces while we do the Q&A? Okay, here we go. I'm going to put everyone on the gallery. Okay, so we have a few questions. So this one is for Liliana Rosa. And I think maybe Vivek, you need to be, you need to go and unmute yourself and ask this question. Uh, yourself because this is quite specific uh, from India to Portugal. Vivek, are you there? Hi, Vivek. Okay. So I'm yes, I am, I'm, I'm oh, here. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I had trouble unmuting myself. Um, so I'll, I'll again read out the question. It's quite specific. But again, uh, we've, I've been researching about this topic for the last one year or so. Uh, uh, so I have a very specific question. Let's say we go there, we move there, we have the D7, we start living there, uh, we apply for the NHR, we get it. And then what happens after the 10 year duration of NHR? Plus, no. let's, uh, let's say, uh, even uh, during the NHR, I understand that the any tax on capital gains would be uh, taxed at ten percent in Portugal. But after the NHR duration, let's we are probably Portuguese citizens by then. So what would be the tax? Okay. Can we still uh, claim DTA benefits? So uh, the, the fiscal uh, status is not related with the citizenship. Okay, you can you can have a fiscal residence in Portugal without the citizenship. So the, the both 
they are not related, okay? But I understand your, your question. After the 10 years, uh, the NHR is no longer available, okay? Because it's not possible to renew to renewal the, the NHR. Uh, and you will stay uh, as the common uh, uh, fiscal resident in Portugal, okay? So you will be, you will have to pay the taxes as we Portuguese people, <laughs> we pay the taxes, okay? Double taxation is always forbidden, even if you don't have NHR. But the, the only thing that can happen is imagine that you have a specific source of income outside Portugal and you pay your taxes there. Then when you declare that income here in Portugal, you will declare the tax you have paid there, okay? And if our tax rate in Portugal is higher than the tax you paid already, you need to pay the difference, okay? If not, if it's less here in Portugal, you have a credit uh, tax, um, okay? You will have a credit for that tax, but uh, uh, this is specific. Uh, this is a specific situation that you will, we need to, to talk about with more detail because we need to know exactly what kind of uh, uh, income is and what is the, the tax rate there to be able to give you um, a properly uh, um, a specific uh, answer. Okay, uh, when you were uh, talking, you said something about 10%. The 10% rate, it's not uh, for all uh, uh, income, okay? Uh, the 10% for, for, for capital gains and dividends, it is 10%, right? Uh, it depends, the, uh, uh, depends on the source of the income uh, and depends on the treaty. Okay, but it's not so straightforward that it's 10%. For pensions, no question, it's 10% uh, in depending, uh, it's not depending on the, the, the country from where you are receiving the, the pension, okay? But for other, uh, other sources of income, we need to check always the treaty that Portugal has with that specific country. So, so as per your example, for example, you said uh, it will depend on which country has the higher rate. So, for example, that specific amount that's taxable in India, let's say at 20 percent, 25 percent, whereas um, uh, Portugal might have something like 48 percent. So I'm going to no, have to the capital a... gains. No, capital gain, the tax rate in Portugal for capital gains is 28 percent. Uh, the the forty eight percent is for uh, for example for uh, um, uh, work highest, uh, uh, yeah. for salaries for uh, uh, for uh, self employee activity income for that okay. kind of 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 uh, um, income okay for capital gains is twenty eight percent and then we have a, a couple of exemptions too that will depend if the company who is paying your dividends it's a, a small or medium company company or not so it have has that specific that has that specific specifications okay so but general uh, generally it's the answer i gave you so so overall it's it's there's no reason to be uh, too scared about the tax if because when I read uh, you know those 20 30 48 percent taxes in Portugal that's the only reason that I sort of hold myself back uh, mm -hmm. if, if I've already paid taxes in Singapore in India on those amounts uh, as you said capital gains there it may be if it's 28 percent then probably if I've paid 20 I'd probably have to just pay another eight percent in in Portugal Yes, you will pay. You will pay the difference. Okay. Okay. Thanks, you, Liliana. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Liliana. Um, another one here is five hundred thousand. The investment for golden visa per individual, or is that per family, Anna Marta? Maybe you can oh. take that. The five hundred thousand investment is for the investor. The investor, it needs to be just one single person. But, however, the investor can have a family. So this is the family reunification. The investor can apply for the family reunification. That includes minor children, spouse, uh, legal children at more than 18 years old, as long as they are single, they study, and they are uh, economically dependent from the investor. 
the other also the parents who, who uh, they are more than uh, 65 years old also can be uh, reunification right okay so, so it's not it's not per family it's per investor if the investor has a family he can apply for the family reunification okay and family unification is both for golden visa and d7 right yes okay perfect what is better to have is it better to have a golden visa or a d7 the difference between them is what i said before if the person wants to live in portugal d7 is the better choice if the person don't want or can't live in in uh, in portugal the golden visa is the better choice. Perfect, got that one. Um, another question, what is the requirements to open a bank account for D7? For example, do you have to have employment? The D7 is a visa for uh, retires or for in persons who live from their own income. So for you to have a bank account, you need to prove that you have uh, money, a bank account in another country, another employment, uh, dividends from another country. And these requirements, uh, they are different from each bank. But as long as you have enough income to show that you can open here a bank account, it's enough. Okay. Um, and let's talk about timeline, getting the D7 and golden visa. How long does it take? Okay. Three weeks? Okay, now this is a very, very hard question and answer because since we are with COVID-19, the timelines, there are no timelines, sorry. Uh, the golden visa process is very delayed. And the D7 visa, I would say that for the ap approval, for the validation, it will take at least six months. Okay. So not, not three weeks as I, I was hoping for. No. Now there are, there are no strict timelines since we are with this pandemic. Okay. Yeah. So you get it, if you really want to, you know, if this, you've decided to move to Portugal, you really have to kind of have a proper timeline, like about a year or so. Yeah. Um, another question. Are dividends from Singapore tax-free in Portugal? I think you mentioned something about that, Liliana Rossa. Yes, I talk about the UK. It was just an example. Uh, I, I need to check the, the treaty between Portugal and Singapore. And I need to know if the, the company, um, what is the balance of the company, okay, to be able to give that, uh, that answer. Okay. Um, there's a question here from Sean. I'm going to read it out loud. For Golden Visa, I heard 500,000 euros and 1.5 million euros. Apologies, the line was breaking up for me when you mentioned maintaining 1.5 million euros in the bank account. Can you explain again, what is the scenario that requires investment 500,000 and what scenario requires 1.5 million euros? For the real estate acquisition, it is 500,000 euros. For, because there are types of investment, real estate acquisition, and imagine a, a deposit, a bank deposit. For the bank deposit, it is now the minimum uh, since uh, January the 1st is 1,500,000 euros. Okay. I hope that answered your question, Sean. Um, what is the most difficult hurdle to get these visas? I mean, I guess if you have the money, is that easy enough to get them? For the golden visa, you need to buy. You don't. You can't have criminal record, for instance, and you need to have a valid passport, and you need to pay the immigration border fees. For the D7 visa, you need to show to the authorities, to the consulate, that you have enough income to live in Portugal. Okay. 
And I think Ko, I think that answered your question. His question was, can I obtain a D7 visa just by placing 20,000 euros into a bank account and rent a place instead of buying into one? Can you yes, get you don't a D7? need to buy. You don't need to buy a place. You just need to rent a place. You need to have the bank balance. You need to have a health insurance. Mm -hmm. And you also need to have a Portuguese tax number, NIF, like Liliana Rosa told you. And each, I, I, I need to adv advise you and be reminded that each consulate has their own requirements. So you, we also need to check the consulate where you are living, what are they demanding for this D7? But these is, are the straight uh, requirements. Okay, I think we have, all have to check. Um, Patricia, one question for you. Can one start looking for a property without physically being there? And how do we start that process um, coming from Singapore? Where should we start? Yes, um, in fact, this is what um, we've been doing the last uh, year. Um, it's very straightforward. The first uh, process would be to um, get the NIF uh, through Liliana Rosa. So we, three of us, we all work together. Uh, we work as a team, so that's why there's good synergy. So the first process would be for the client to get the Portuguese tax number from Liliana. And then Ana Marta would introduce that client to a bank wherein um, requirements, requirements will be asked from the client to submit to the bank which are straightforward requirements, like for instance, bank statements, um, you know, uh, where the, the person works, the source of income. And then what, once the bank account is open, they will have to purchase a property or do funds and um, even hire 10 people. There are several ways of doing the golden visa as what Ana Marta um, mentioned earlier. But for my side, um, I, can, I can help with everything, but the most popular um, math, uh, way right now is property uh, purchase. So what I do, since everybody's remotely, um, is not, they're not here, I try to get their requirements. So I work with all the real estate agencies. I don't hard sell one particular um, real estate agency because I believe that um, I need to match the needs of my clients. They need to be happy of whatever they'll purpose, not just for the golden visa, but for them to also have something very profitable. And, you know, they're proud of their purchase. So I'll, I try to get the, um, the requirements of the client and try to find out if it's for the, uh, the properties for them to live in or merely for investment. And then once I get the requirements, I try to find the best options for them. So I work with top real estate agencies here like JLL, Porta de Friend, Remax. So I try to source out that property. I'll present it to the client. It gets shortlisted and then I go do the viewing, like video, photos. And then, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. And then voila, they have their own property. Through, of course, the help of Ana Marta and Liliana. Okay, fantastic. I think that's how people look at properties these days, just through video, yeah. even within Singapore, I, I think. I think a lot of people who have been, you know, viewing apartments in, in Singapore have been viewing it through video. I think Rina would agree with me on that one. Um, okay, right, next question. What are the tax and residence regulations for EU citizens relocating to Portugal? Okay, this, this I can uh, answer uh, together with Marta. <laughs> for the tax residence, uh, it's, it's the same. Uh, if you have a European passport or not, Okay, you just you need to have an if here in Portugal, then you need to have an address here in Portugal. After you have an address in Portugal, you can change your tax address to Portugal and you automatically will become um, a tax resident resident here in Portugal. Okay, you can do that as soon as you arrive to Portugal because you already know that you will stay here for um, one year, two years, uh, doesn't matter. Or if you don't know if you will stay here or not, the rule says that if you stay in Portugal, or, or if you are living in Portugal, at least for 183 days, around six months, it's mandatory to change your fiscal address to Portugal, okay? But this is the rule. You can, of course, you can stay here without doing that right away, uh, 
uh, but the rule says that if you stay here for more than six months, you need to change your fiscal address to Portugal and you need to declare your global income here in Portugal, according to the rules, of course, and you can apply for the NHR too, but to change your tax residence to Portugal, uh, you just need to have an address here in Portugal, a rental contract or buy a house or a work contract uh, works too. Okay, that sounds easy enough, I think. Um, one question, which bank would you recommend for expats who do not speak Portuguese? Every bank speaks English, so there is no recommendation. It depends on the client. Okay. This is quite a specific one. Maybe, I'm not too sure who can answer this. Maybe all three of you can answer it. It's from Fiona. Investing in property, how much tax do you need to pay on profit 28%? Do you also have to pay VAT 23% on the income? That's over 50% of the rental income. No, I can I can answer that. Uh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, the rental income, you just pay the 28%, okay? Uh, imagine that you are you are have an investment here and it's a property and you want to rent that property uh, you will have your rental income during the year and you will have to pay 28 percent the tax rate is 28 percent and uh, the tax authorities will apply to your net income it's not even to your gross income because we have a few expenses that we can deduct from our uh, uh, gross income okay we have for example the condominium expenses the management fees the insurance the, the renovations maintenance um, uh, uh, things that is 100 percent related with the house okay with the property one thing that the lawyer sees have, liliana to lawyer the contract agreement contract. you can say <laughs> yes. also this Yes, I, I, I just mentioned the, the management fee, but of course, if you need to, and you need a lawyer to prepare the, the rental contract, you can deduct that cost too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the only cost that is 100% related to the property that it's not possible to uh, deduct is the interest if you have a loan, okay? It's not possible to, to deduct that specific income uh, expense, sorry. But um, uh, the, the other costs you can uh, deduct from your gross income, then you will have your net income. And then to that net income, you will apply 28%. The VAT, it's, it, uh, you don't charge VAT on your uh, uh, rental uh, contracts, okay? It's only if you have a company and it's your work to the business is to rent houses or properties not is not the case okay you are a singular person that's it's just uh, having uh, your property <laughs> rented out and the tax rate is 28 percent okay. sorry could okay. i, I it's, it's fiona here i've just asked the question so i didn't quite catch the last bit because we've bought a property and we're having to rent it through an agent so what was the last bit you said about vat you don't pay your tenant will not pay you the VAT. So for, as me as a landlord who's renting as an investment, because lots of people will be looking to buy for an investment, I only have to pay 28% on the net income. There's no VAT for me to pay because I will have to rent it through an agent. You will pay the VAT on the services that a, the agency will provide you, but it's different, okay? You will pay the VAT on the services that you will have Okay, so but you said, okay. you also said that some of those were tax deductible. So, for example, yeah. what sort of services would that be? Advertising. For example, the man, the, the fee that you will pay to the agency will be one hundred percent tax deductible, including the VAT that you will pay them. Okay, so imagine that you will pay one one thousand plus VAT. It's one one thousand two hundred and thirty. You will uh, you will be able to deduct that all amount. Uh, to your uh, uh, rental income and then con the condominium fee the insurance fire insurance the uh, maintenance that you will have to do uh, to the apartment during the the periods that you have indeed 
uh, tenants, okay? Otherwise, it's not possible. You need to have the apartments rented out or you need to prove that the, the maintenance or the, re the renovation that you did before you have a tenant was to be able to, to get it rented, okay? Uh, and uh, I was saying that, for example, if you have a loan, uh, the interests, they are not deductible. Okay, but you just need to think, okay, this cost, I can prove that it's 100% related with the property and mostly with the, the contract I have. If the answer is yes, you can deduct that cost, but you need to keep always the invoice, okay? And the invoice needs to, 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 to have your NIF, your Portuguese tax number. It's very important, this okay. specific. Okay. So I'm only, paying, I'm only paying VAT at 23% on the services that the management, the agency provides me. Or, or, or other services, okay? You will have to pay the VAT on, on services, but on the rental, the profit that you will have with the rental contract, the tax rate is 28%. You don't pay VAT on your profit, okay? Of course, you will have VAT, but when you are buying services or if you want to buy something here in Portugal, a bottle of water will, will have VAT, of course. Okay, but you will not charge VAT to your tenants and you will not have to pay VAT on your profit, okay? On your profit, it's only the, the, the tax rate of 28%. Okay, thank you. I think Fiona, I think Fiona, maybe if you want to take it further, we can give you uh, Liliana's email address and you can ask her further questions. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, another question. What is the resident visa situation for a British person married to an EU national? And also, oh. can you give details about health insurance? Do you, can you give details about health insurance? I'm no. not too sure. Regarding the first question, you are a lucky because you are married with a European citizen, so you don't need to get a, or a D7 or a golden visa. You just need to come here to Portugal with your spouse and register yourself in the city hall, and then you can go to the biometrics on the immigration border. But this is... Um, a simple process, it is very cheap because this person is married with a European Union citizen. So my advice is don't get a divorce now. So wait a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> the other question about the health insurance, um, I believe this person is asking because I spoke about the health insurance for the D7 visa. This is really simple. Um, it needs to be a year uh, time period and renewal each year. Uh, the health insurance depends on your age, but I would say 50 uh, euros monthly is enough for you to have a health insurance. Okay, good. Um, this is a question for Patricia. For golden visa, I heard you need to purchase outside of Lisbon. Is that right? This came into effect January of this year. Is that true? Um, not really. Um, it's true in terms of residential. For residential, uh, the government stopped um, the purchase of residential in Porto, uh, Lisbon, and the coastal region end of the year. But you're still able to purchase in, in these key cities, but it has to be a commercial property. Commercial and um, meant for touristic as well. Um, at the moment, there's an election coming up end of the month, and a lot of people are speculating that there might be changes. So we don't know at the moment. But as of now, this is uh, what's happening. So the residential purchase has... Um, stopped end of the year, end of 2021. And now it's just for commercial purposes and touristic that you can buy the property. And right. it's 500,000 as well. It's, so it has increased. Yeah, okay. There's another question I think for Liliana. For entrepreneurs under the NHR tax regime, is income from outside Portugal subject to 20% flat tax or is it exempt? Uh, okay, depends on the country. Okay, uh, let's say for example, 
uh, the Singapore, uh, I need to 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 check okay. uh, the, the the treaty between uh, Portugal and Singapore uh, because from Singapore we had a lot of investors, but they uh, until this moment they didn't change their uh, fiscal residence to Portugal. Okay, so uh, I have a couple of clients in that situation, but they they, they just have like investments in funds and stocks and things like that. Okay, but uh, for example. Uh, from the US, uh, you don't need to pay anything, okay? From the UK, you will have to pay. Yeah, but it's always the, the, the difference. If you already paid something, we will do the balance. Okay, but uh, uh, if Rami wants to, to send us an email with the, the, the source of the income, the country, we can, we can answer him. Okay, and the 20%, we need to prove that the person is providing um, uh, high uh, value activity. It's not for everyone. Okay? okay, it's not just because you have the NHR that you will pay just twenty percent. Okay, right. We need to prove that you are you ha you have a high value activity. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, yes. For those who are employed, does the employer need to be based in Portugal to be eligible for NH NHR? They have to live here. They have to move to Portugal. Sorry, uh, the, the NHR, uh, for you to, to be able to apply for the NHR status, it's mandatory to change your fiscal address to Portugal, but it's not mandatory that your work contract is in Portugal, okay? You just need to change your fiscal address to Portugal and you can do that uh, just with a uh, rental contract, okay? And then you can keep your, <coughs> your work contract outside Portugal and of course, you will are under the rules of the NHR and you have the possibility to have the high value activity tax uh, rate. Uh, everything is the same. It's not mandatory that your uh, work uh, um, contract uh, it's based here in Portugal. Okay, you have a lot of examples uh, for, for the, the pilots, for example. They you have a lot of pilots working for Ryanair or EasyJet. They are based here in Portugal. They have their fiscal residence in Portugal, but the companies they are based in uh, Ireland, in UK, and okay, and they pay their, their taxes here in Portugal according to the rules. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> this is a this is I don't know if you can answer this one. May I know if Portugal is a good destination for scientists and researchers? Have you come yes, across any yes, 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 I have a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, and then uh, Marta can, can help you with that too because we have a specific regime for them, for the visa too, okay. All oh, right, there's a specific one for, for scientists and researchers. Well, every, obviously every country wants them, right? So. And that's the market that's growing actually, the research and development too. Okay. Um, right, golden visa for 350,000 euros for properties in areas that need renovation. So are there any cities in Silver Coast area that come under this plan? Would you know, Patricia? I think Anna Marta can help me with that, but it's not 350. Yeah. Okay. The 350, okay. the 350 are yeah. for um, the kind of investment that you need to buy uh, an apartment, a house, and rehabilitate that one. And that is possible. But now, since January 1st, we need to check if, uh, because now there, the, the Portugal is divided for this kind of investment. So we need to check if the person, where the person wants to, 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 to live, to choose the property and see if it is possible. Then the other step is, there is another, there is a, a house or an apartment which has to be rehabilitated because it's not just painting or change a kitchen or a WC. It's need to have a project for rehabilitation works. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Anamata. This is Vivek again. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just continue a little bit on this question. So for example, I have some specific cities in mind, like Torres Vedras, Caldas, Rhinia. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might be not taking the names correctly. Uh, no, no, then, you are. I fully understand. <laughs> and then, so, uh, 
we and need then, to check yeah. in the government list mm. th that is if for, any of these areas come on the, yes and uh, then you can choose yes okay okay thank you thank you and uh i had one more question which is uh i'm just jumping the queue but i'll just ask one that question as well um just a second Okay, we'll take another question while you find your question. Okay. Um, which which are the key economic industries in Portugal? What did the government invest in infrastructure last year or any future blueprint for investment in the country? What percentage of current residents are Asian? That's quite a specific question. I'm not sure if you guys can answer that one. That is uh, with quite specific. It okay. is an economical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, maybe we can Google the percentage later. Um, as a retiree aiming for D7 visa who earns rental and equity trading dividend income in Singapore, what are my tax liability under NIF? Mainly, what is NIF for retirees like me? And NIF, I, I, I am not uh, seeing that. Uh, yeah, but it's the tax NHR. number. No, the NHR is not. The NHR is one thing. The NIF is the, is another thing. The 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 NIF is your tax number. And the NHR is the, the specific regime, the fiscal regime. But uh, I, I'm not finding that question. It's, uh, can it's you... all the way at the bottom. Doesn't matter. Oh, okay. We can take that again later. Um, this is just a general question. How is the public transport system in Portugal? Does one need a car to get around? Or is getting bus and train around from cities to cities enough and reliable? Yes, there are. We have trains, thank God. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, and, and the city, you have, um, how it called, a metro, a bus, yes. no? We have the Several? metro, the buses, metro. Uh, metro. And right now, the government is encouraging everyone to uh, use the, the bicycle. We have path, uh, pathways now for the scooters, bicycles. They want to, um, to have Lisbon or the, the key cities to be green. Um, and as a foreigner, I don't drive. Um, so I take Uber almost every day and it's, it's pretty much uh, affordable. Yeah, okay. And investment aside, how safe is Portugal? Crime rate and everything? Um, very, you safe. very safe. Very safe. Yeah, I, like we're around top 10. I've never been world. robbed in my life. <laughs> well, you see, you're talking from people, you're, you're mostly people are from Singapore and, you know, there's not really any, you know, there's, we have tiny, tiny crime, but yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of people may be, it's you know, moving. Yeah. it's pretty safe. It's yeah. pretty safe. Like for me, um, when we go to the beach, we just leave our bags, yeah. like my husband and I. And that's the, the last um, almost 20 years. We do that and I never ex we never experience being robbed. You, okay. you have that sense of safety as well. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what I love about this country too. Okay. Um, another question. For Golden Visa, can I get a local mortgage to purchase property? Uh, around 500,000 euros. How did that work actually? No, you need to, you need to invest. The, you need the to amount. have that. Yeah. Yes. So you need to have the 500,000 already. Yes. How, however, if you want to buy, let's say um, an amount more than the 500,000, it's doable to, to um, apply for mortgage. Let's say you're buying um, 800,000, you can borrow the 300,000, but the 500,000 needs to be cash. And you need to prove that you have that, you know, that money in your bank. And so one of the requirements. Yeah. So that when you have that five hundred thousand cash to show, then mm -hmm. you can get a local mortgage from a local bank to purchase for the excess, for the excess. For, the, for, the, for the rest of the property. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. And you need, and you also need. It's not only that you need to show them that you can afford a loan exactly you need to pay the five hundred thousand right but for the bank you need to accomplish all the requirements you need to show that you are healthy enough to pay the the loan 
Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have to from, like yeah. not only have the, the five five hundred k. Yeah, definitely make sure and show that you can actually pay the mortgage every month for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Thank you very much for answering questions. Oh, you're most welcome. Well, actually, I already found the the question. Uh, sorry. Oh. Okay, uh, I yes, already please. found the question. It is it's good because I can do uh, just a, a summary of the NHR because I, I saw that it was a, a lot of questions about it. Yeah. So you can have the NHR as soon as you arrive to Portugal. Okay, you just need to change your fiscal address to Portugal and apply for the NHR. The rule says that if you stay here for more than 183 days, it's mandatory to change it but we don't have a minimum period to stay. So if you are here for one week, one month, doesn't matter. You can apply for the NHR, okay? The, the law just say that if you stay here for more than 183 days, you have to apply, okay? With the NHR, your income can be all from abroad. It's not mandatory to have a work contract in Portugal or a self-employee in Portugal or a business in Portugal, okay? You can have your fiscal residence, residence in Portugal, have, have the NHR without any income inside Portugal, okay? You can have your all your income from abroad Portugal. We just need to declare it in Portugal. It's mandatory when you change your fiscal address to Portugal to declare your global income in Portugal, but it's not mandatory that that income, the source of that income is in Portugal, okay? Then if I saw it, uh, two or three questions about it, the NHR is for 10 years. But if you want to move uh, again to another country, to other country, and you stay there for two, three years, you can, and then you will, you want to come back again to Portugal, okay? You can have the remaining period. Okay, because you will have the NHR for 10 years. Imagine that you will stay here five years, then you go and live abroad for two years. You are still having the three remaining years to have the 10 years, so you don't lose the NHR, okay? After the 10 years of the NHR, you don't have the status anymore because it's not renewal, but if you will uh, live again uh, for, for other country and you stay there again for five years, you can apply for the NHR again, okay? If not, if you want to stay here after the 10, uh, the 10 uh, years, um, it's nothing related to the citizenship and anything. You just need to, to, you will start paying the taxes according to our law, okay? That specific question about the, the, the NIF and the NHR, um, it's about the dividend and the, the retirement, the pensions, the tax rate is 10%, and the, the dividends, I need to know more details about the company who is paying you the dividends, okay? And I think it's this, <laughs> sorry. If I, I, I spoke too fast, just then <laughs> you can answer. No, no, no not more. at all. You know, what, what we're gonna do is, this is a recording, so we are gonna send this recording to everybody who signed up this evening, but also what I'm gonna do is to put Patricia's, Anna Marta and Liliana's email uh, on my thank you email to everybody so that you guys have their de details, uh, email and telephone numbers and how you can reach them. And you can um, ask them directly of any specific tax questions or immigration questions or property questions you may have. Um, Anna, Marta and Patricia, any last words from, from you ladies? I'm available for any questions, any queries, because I know there are a lot, because this is very specific. And most of all, it is very brave to change the country, to move. So I'm always here to support you. Absolutely, Patricia. Uh, for myself, um, I'd be happy to work with anyone, um, everyone, uh, because it's it's my passion. I just want to be connected with people that um, Matt, that um, is um, you know uh, wanting to look for an alternative or wanting to find something new in, in their lives because it's something that I've experienced and I'm here to, to help them uh, all the way. And just feel free to contact me for anything that you need um, any assistance of. Thank you so much for your time. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for all the informative, uh, everything, information that you gave us this evening. You might just find all of us moving to Portugal um, now <laughs> with now with COVID and, and everyone kind of working from anywhere and everywhere. Uh, it's now easy to uh, to go anywhere. And also, you know, with restrictions from here and there. Um, I think a lot of people will decide in the near future where their, you know, further future will be, whether it will be in Portugal, Singapore, Australia, whoever. Uh, I know, Rina, you are hoping to go to Portugal one day. Me too, actually, now that I, now that I know that uh, EU citizens can just slide in. Um, so thank you very much, Mummy, for my Danish passport. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Uh, yes, thank you so much for this evening. Very informative, as I said. If we have more questions, we'll definitely drop you a line, Patricia, Marta, thank and, so and Lillian. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, yes, yeah, stay tuned for the recording. I'll send it over. And uh, ladies, I will share your info uh, and details with everybody who, who joined this evening. So hopefully you can all help us in the near future. Thank you so much and good night. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.